Palantir is down 14% today after reporting its Q1 earnings results, and I have been asked by dozens of people to go through the earnings report and share my thoughts. So I did. I went through the press release, the investor presentation, the shareholder letter, and the transcript to find out what is going on, why is the stock down, if the market is overreacting, and if Palantir is looking like a buy today. And in today's video, we will be answering all of these questions. Before we get into the video though, I want to let you all know that you can now get a free month of Stock Unlock by clicking the referral link in the description below. This link will give you $10 off Stock Unlock when you go to checkout, which is equivalent to a free month. Stock Unlock is the stock analysis platform that I use here on my channel, and we're also about to release a powerful AI stock analysis tool. This tool will allow you to generate an in-depth stock analysis report on thousands of different stocks with the click of a button. This feature is not released yet though, but we're pushing hard to get it and many other awesome new features out as soon as possible. So if you're interested in checking out Stock Unlock, then make sure to go and get a free month by using the link in my description. And with that being said, let's now hop right into the video. And this is the Q1 highlights from Palantir. So right away, we can see that net income came in at $106 million, which was a 17% net margin. So Palantir is actually producing positive earnings now on a gap basis, and the company is definitely profitable. Revenue also grew 21% year over year and 4% quarter over quarter to $634 million. 21% year over year revenue growth is very strong revenue growth, especially in the market that we're in. U.S. commercial revenue grew by 40% year over year, and U.S. commercial customer count grew by 69% year over year. So the U.S. commercial business over at Palantir is performing incredibly well and growing strong. Commercial revenue overall grew 27% year over year, government revenue grew 16% year over year, and customer count overall grew 42% year over year. So it seems like so far, the overall business is growing quite strong, and it is seeing strong growth rates as well. Cash from operations was $130 million, representing a 20% margin, so operating cash flow is positive, and the operating cash flow margin is 20%. Adjusted free cash flow of $149 million, representing a 23% free cash flow margin, and cash and cash equivalents of $3.9 billion at the end of the quarter. So Palantir is generating hundreds of millions of dollars of free cash flow now, and it does have $3.9 billion on the balance sheet, which is very good to see. So now let's head over to the actual income statement here. So right away, we can see that revenue was up roughly $109 million year over year for the first quarter. Now, what I like about these software businesses is we can see that the cost to produce this revenue only increased by roughly $9 million year over year. So they produced an extra $109 million in revenue and only spent another $9 million in cost of revenue to produce that figure. So overall, the gross profit for Palantir is now sitting at $518 million. The income from operations is also up 20x year over year to $81 million. However, we can see that at the bottom of the income statement, Palantir's shares outstanding did grow by roughly 8% year over year. And this is definitely one of my bearish points for the company, is that they do have a history of doing significant shareholder dilution. 8% year over year dilution is a lot. So yeah, this is something that I actually do not like to see. But the overall fundamentals of this business do seem to be growing quite well. Now, moving on to Palantir's balance sheet really quickly. Here we can see that they have $520 million in cash and $3.3 billion in marketable securities, which is basically stocks. So together, that's about $3.9 billion in liquid assets. Now, if we take a look at the current liabilities, they're sitting at $750 million, and the company's total liabilities is sitting at $946 million. So if Palantir wanted to, it could sell some stock and use its existing cash position to completely wipe out every single liability on the balance sheet, and it would still have $3 billion left over. So this is a very strong balance sheet, and with the company also producing hundreds of millions of dollars in free cash flow, I think that it's safe to say that Palantir's business is not in any financial stress at all. This is actually a very, very clean balance sheet, and it's really good to see. So now let's move on to the cash flow statement, which is my favorite financial statement. Right away, we can see that stock-based compensation came in at $125.6 million, which is up year over year. And this is quite a bit of stock-based compensation relative to the $130 million of operating cash flow that the business produced. Basically, this means that almost all of the operating cash flow is stock-based compensation. Or in other words, the stock-based compensation is almost entirely offsetting the profits that the business is generating. So in my opinion, this is actually quite a bit of stock-based compensation going on, which is also adding to the overall dilution that Palantir is doing. So this is another little bit of a red flag for me. Now, what is great to see is that the company's capital expenditures is only $2.6 million, okay? 
So it costs this company almost nothing to produce that $130 million in operating cash flow. And I've talked about this before on my channel, but one of the reasons why I love these software companies, Constellation Software is another perfect example of this, by the way, but these companies are able to grow and compound their operating profits or their operating cash flows without spending a lot more money on capital expenditures. What this ultimately leads to is a very high free cash flow margin and a significant amount of potential free cash flow growth for the shareholders in the future. So again, this is a very good thing to see. Now, the last bearish point here, though, is that last year in the first quarter, Palantir did generate $187 million in operating cash flow, and it did actually decline year over year by about $50 million. So that is definitely something to note as well. All right, but now let's move on to the investor presentation for the first quarter. And here we can see that commercial revenue growth was 27% year over year to about $300 million. So this is the size of Palantir's commercial business now. U.S. commercial revenue growth was 40% year over year, though, and is now at $150 million. And now the U.S. commercial revenue growth is making up the slight majority of Palantir's overall commercial revenue growth. So the majority of their commercial revenue is now actually coming from the United States, and this revenue is growing at 40% year over year. Now, what this means is that if the U.S. growth rate can continue, then Palantir's overall revenue growth will accelerate as the U.S. commercial revenue continues to make up more and more of the company's overall revenue. Moving on, we can see that the government revenue growth was 16% year over year, and the government revenue came in at $335 million. So overall, Palantir's government revenue is still the majority of the business, so they are getting the majority of their revenue from governments. However, again, with their commercial business growing faster and only slightly smaller now, I don't think that it's going to take a lot of time for the commercial part of the business to actually become the majority. And since the commercial business is growing faster, and if it can maintain those higher growth rates, then again, that could lead to overall revenue acceleration for Palantir over the long term, if they can maintain that though. That's the thing though. They got to maintain that growth to the commercial revenue. U.S. government revenue growth was also 12% year over year to $257 million. So let's continue on. U.S. commercial customer count was up 69% year over year and up 19% quarter over quarter. So Palantir did sign on a lot of U.S. commercial customers in the first quarter of 2024. Now, the reason this is bullish is because Palantir tends to sign on customers, then those customers end up using Palantir more and signing larger contracts over time. This means that Palantir could see organic revenue growth from these customers over time now that they are signed on as customers. It's very much so a land and expand strategy. So Palantir lands new customers and then over time expands their contract value on a per customer basis. So now let's get into the transcript here, and there's a couple of screenshots that I thought were very interesting. So let's start with this one right here. Lowe's accelerated its engagement from a starting point of no AI to utilizing production level AI for over 1,000 customer service agents, resulting in a 75% reduction in overdue tasks. As one of its directors noted, we achieved this in just four months and onboarded 1,000 users within three weeks of rollout. Cleveland Clinic committed to a 10-year expansion deal to deploy more broadly across hospitals. General Mills expanded the scope of its work further last quarter, as its senior director noted, we're saving on average about $14 million annually, and it's really only deployed to part of our network as we speak. We're seeing rapid expansions within key customer accounts. For example, a Fortune 500 industrial company signed a three-year expansion deal, which increased the annual revenue run rate of our work with them nearly five-fold compared to our initial agreement with them in 2022. A Fortune 100 retail company started a pilot in Q2 2023, expanded to a use case conversion in August and expanded its work to $12 million ACV enterprise engagement last quarter. These are just a few examples. More and more customers are expanding their work with us due to AIP and the incredible traction of our software has within their organizations. Here Palantir is giving us some very clear examples of their land and expand strategy because they are providing real world examples of their customers increasing their contract value over time with Palantir and using overall more services from Palantir over time. Continuing on, this says the U.S. Army awarded Palantir over $178 million to be the sole prime contractor to build a next generation targeting node under the Titan program. So the U.S. Army is also awarding Palantir with contracts in the hundreds of millions of dollar range. And Palantir and the U.S. government are very closely tied. So we're probably going to see more large contracts like this for Palantir from the U.S. government over the long term. Continuing on, this says. First quarter trailing 12-month revenue from our top 20 customers increased 9% year-over-year to $55 million per customer. So again, we can see that their customers are expanding their overall contracts with Palantir 
and year over year the top 20 customers did increase the revenue by 9%. However, David also continues on to say, $149 million in international commercial revenue in the first quarter, which was up 16% year over year, but was down 3% quarter over quarter as a result of the continued headwinds in Europe. So Palantir's international commercial revenue did actually decline quarter over quarter due to the weakness over in Europe, which is something else to note, and that is a little bit more of a bearish point. First quarter international government revenue increased 33% year over year, but declined 9% sequentially, which is quarter over quarter. So international government revenue also declined by 9% quarter over quarter. So the international segment of Palantir's business was actually a headwind in this quarter. However, the U.S. business is growing incredibly well. Now, the last screenshot that I have right here is the outlook for the next quarter and for the full year of 2022. So this says revenue between $649 and $653 million for the second quarter. This is quarter over quarter revenue growth of 2%, and it is year over year revenue growth of about 22%. So year over year, that is strong revenue growth, but quarter over quarter, that's not that strong of revenue growth. Again, from Q4 to Q1, they saw 4% quarter over quarter revenue growth. So now Q1 to Q2, they are expecting to see a less revenue growth quarter over quarter. So that could be a reason why the stock is down today as well. For the full year of 2024 though, they are raising their revenue guidance between $2.677 billion and $2.689 billion. So they did increase their overall revenue outlook for the year to about $2.68 billion. They also are expecting free cash flow of $800 million to $1 billion for the year of 2024, which is roughly $900 million in free cash flow for the year, right in the middle of that range. So the company is projecting pretty strong free cash flow growth this year as well, and the company is on track to produce almost $1 billion of free cash flow this year. So now let's head back over to Stock Unlock, and we can see that Palantir is currently valued at about $56.280 billion. Now, if we divide this by the $900 million in free cash flow that they are expecting for the year of 2024, then we get a price to free cash flow of roughly 62.5. Now, this is a very high price ratio to pay for any business, okay? And to put this in perspective, if we go 100 divided by 62.5, then this is only a 1.6% free cash flow yield on the cost of the shares today. Or in other words, if Palantir wanted to return 100% of its free cash flow to shareholders, then it could only return about 1.6%, which is not a very high return at all. So to me, this is still a very expensive business, and this is a very high price to pay for a business that is growing its revenue at 20%. Honestly, guys, it's not extremely rare to find a business that is growing at 20%. It is rare right now, but there are businesses that are growing at 20%. I actually do have a position in my personal portfolio where the business is growing revenues at 20% and cash flows at over 20% annually, and it is trading for about 11 times operating income right now. So that is the same revenue and profit growth, but at, but at one sixth of the price. So I do think that this is a very expensive business. Now, the reason that I think that Palantir is expensive today is because I do personally believe that AI is a little bit overhyped. I mean, yes, it's probably going to change the world over the long term. And it is definitely changing how businesses work and create value today. But I do think that it is a little bit overhyped. I mean, we're seeing every company that has AI or some sort of AI product see its stock spike rapidly, faster than the business's fundamentals can grow. And ultimately, that leads to stocks trading for pretty high prices. And Palantir being an AI company, it is definitely being bottled in with the overall AI hype right now. Now, I also ran a quick discounted cash flow calculation on Palantir to show everyone what the market is currently pricing in to the stock today. So right here, we can see that we are projecting about 27% annual free cash flow growth over the next five years, also with about 4.4% annual dilution and a 40 price to free cash flow at the end of the five years, which I do think is a more fair price ratio to pay for Palantir. And if Palantir can hit a 27% annual free cash flow growth rate and a price to free cash flow of 40, then the stock is trading for about fair value today and could produce around 10% annual returns over the next five years. But again, the company would have to achieve a 27% annual growth rate to free cash flow just for the stock to be considered fair value today. That is a lot of growth that is already priced into the stock. Additionally, a 40 price to free cash flow is still on the expensive end in my opinion, and that is what is already priced into the stock today. So when I take a look at these numbers right here, it basically tells me that if Palantir does not trade for a 40 price to free cash flow in the future and does not grow free cash flow at 27% annually, then the stock has a chance of underperforming going forward and may not produce substantial returns for shareholders. Simply because investors are paying a very high price for the business today and already paying for a lot of its future growth. 
And that is what can happen in the stock market is you can end up paying for a business's future growth if you end up paying it too high of a price for a business. This is also a significant risk to overall shareholder returns. And it's a risk that I focus on here on my channel. And that is why I do not like to buy stocks at very expensive prices or very high price ratios. Because again, it does mean that you are paying for a lot of future growth. So that is my opinion on Palantir. And that is the reason why I am not buying this stock. But I do have to admit there is a lot to like about this business. The business is clearly growing strong. It is growing revenues at 20% annually. It's also producing a ton of free cash flow and it does have a very strong balance sheet with about $4 billion of cash and only about $900 million of debt. So the business is in a very strong place financially. It's not going to see any financial stress anytime soon and it is still growing. I also do like the passion that Alex Carp has. And I actually do think that this business of Palantir is going to grow well over the next five years. It really just comes down to the price for me. And for me, I do think that the price is too high and the price is adding risk to the stock. So for those reasons, I am not personally interested in the stock today, but the fundamentals of this business are growing strong and they do overall look like they are strong as well. But that is going to wrap up the video for today, everyone. And if you did enjoy this video, then please remember to leave a like on it and please subscribe to the channel if you do want to see more content like this about breaking news or just in general stock analysis. But with that being said, that is going to wrap up the video for today, everyone. So thank you so much again for watching. I truly do appreciate it, and I really hope to see you all again in my next one.